Hello everyone, welcome back to this calculus tutorial. Today we're going to actually be looking at limits, specifically when limits exist or do not exist. And today we're going to start that with the limit existence theorem. Let me just get down the limit existence theorem and then we'll talk about how are we going to apply it in some graphs. The limit existence theorem states that the limit of f of x as x approaches a exists if and only if, so if and only if the left hand side of the limit is equivalent to the right hand side of the limit. There's an extra piece to that, but let me write that out first. So if the limit of f of x as x approaches some value from the left hand side equals the limit of f of x as x approaches some value from the right hand side. So it will exist if and only if they both equal each other, but not only that, if they both equal some real value. So we're gonna say b in this case, but if they come out to be some real number, so where b is going to be any real number. So that's what we're looking at. So the limit of f of x is going to exist when the left hand side equals the right hand side and they're both real values. And we're gonna see that in one of our examples here. So if I move down real quick, we wanna find each of the following from this graph. Okay, so let me look at this. So the limit of f of x is x approaches two. So here's two and I wanna, follow it from the right. So I'm gonna be following this line from the left-hand side. So I think I just said the right. So from the left-hand side, I'm gonna to move to the right. I'm gonna follow this graph and it looks like it's pointing straight up. So since it's going straight up, the limit as x approaches two from the left equals positive infinity. And the same thing on the right side, I'm gonna be approaching two from the right. And we're gonna keep going up as well. So also positive infinity. Now, f of two in this case does not exist because they're both approaching some value and it's also not filled in anywhere. So maybe we had some sort of like discontinuity where it actually got filled in at that point, but in this case, we don't have that. So f of two does not exist. I like to say does not exist, um, but you could also say undefined as well. So when, we, when we're asking, does the limit, does the limit of f of x as x approaches two um, from both sides, does that exist or not? And in this case, we're going to say, well, we're really looking at these two things. Are they equal to the same thing? Yes, they're equal to the same thing, but now you wanna think, is infinity a real number? And it, infinity, just conceptually is the largest value, but it never stops growing. Infinity never stops growing. Um, as soon as you get to the largest value you can think of, there's another one that you can add in after that, and then another one after that. So yes, they're both approaching infinity, but that's not a real number. So the limit of f of x, no, it does not exist because the limit of f of x as x approaches two is not a real value. So that's what we're looking at here. So they're both approaching infinity, but infinity is not a real value. Let's jump over to our second problem. Here we're in example two. Find each of the following from the graph. The limit of f of x as x approaches two from the left. So here's two right here. We're just gonna follow the graph from the left as we approach two, and it looks like the graph looks like it's heading towards positive two. On the right side, same thing, we approach two from the right, and as I'm looking at this graph come down, yeah, it is also going to be approaching two on the y value as well. Now, f of two in this case, well, it is filled in down here, and that's going to equal negative three. So does the limit exist? Well the left-hand side limit is equal to the right-hand side limit, but they don't equal the value there. But go back to that definition. They don't need to equal the value. They just need to equal each other and be a real value. 
In this case, yes, because the limit of f of x as x approaches two from the left is equivalent to the limit of f of x as x approaches two from the right, which is equal to two. Two is a real number. Now we're here looking at example number three. We wanna find each of the following from the graph. So the limit of f of x as x approaches two from the left. So again, we're approaching two, but this time from the left-hand side. And the graph is heading to this value, three. Now the limit of f of x as x approaches two from the right, it's heading to this value, negative three. So we're approaching two from the left and from the right. So what is the value of f of two? Well, that's equal to three. So does the limit exist? Well, again, we go back to the limit existence theorem and we're asking ourselves, does the left-hand limit equal the right-hand limit? Are these the two numbers? No, these are not equivalent. So the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit. So I'm going to write that no, the limit of f of x as x approaches two from the left does not equal the limit of f of x as x approaches two from the right. So that's our reasoning why it is not equivalent. So based off of what you've seen so far, does the value f of a actually need to be defined in order for the limit to exist at that point? Now I kind of answered it earlier, but now what I'm asking you guys to do is to draw and explain two different graphs to justify your reasoning. So just, you wanna put two different sketches in here, sketch one, sketch two, and in both graphs, try to make the limit exist while in the second one, you don't want it to exist. So think about what you can do, what kind of discontinuities you can come up with. All right, here are the couple of the graphs that I came up with. Your graphs may look nothing like that, and that's okay. But what I wanna point out is here in our first graph, the limit does exist. The limit of f of x as x approaches a, that is that does exist, so let me write that down. And what you wanna think about here is, okay, so it exists, but we have a discontinuity. And we name that a removable discontinuity or a point discontinuity. So in our second graph, again, f of a is not defined just like it is in our first graph, but also the limit does not exist because the left-hand limit is not equivalent to the right-hand limit. So the limit of f of x as x approaches a does not exist. Well, what happens here at x equal to a, we have another type of discontinuity and this one is a jump discontinuity. So now I wanna go into some of this numerical analysis of limits. Here we're given a table of an exponential function and we wanna determine what are the values of these limits. So the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity. So negative infinity, of course, I'm going this direction towards negative infinity and it looks like the trend is getting larger and larger numbers. So as I'm reading it to the left, 9, 33, 513, really large values. And in that case, what that says to me is that those values are going up towards infinity because they just keep increasing as I move more to the left. Now the limit of f of x as x approaches negative three. So here's negative three and it looks, I mean, it's defined here from what we can determine what we can determine is that it is approaching nine. There's not more information that is telling us that that is not true. So we can make this assumption in this case that the limit as X approaches negative three for F of X is nine because it says it right there. Now here we have the limit of F of X as X approaches one. For the same reason as um, our answer in, in B, we can write down 1.5. Now the limit as x is approaching infinity, so here's infinity, we're going to the right towards infinity. And as my x values are getting larger, so one to three to nine, I wanna look at what the y values tend to be doing. And so it goes 1.5, 1.125, 1 
1.002. What that kind of says to me is that those values are getting closer and closer and closer to one. And so our limit as x approaches infinity is going to equal one. Now here I have another table that we're looking at. Now notice here that we have some undefined points, but again, the point does not need to be defined in order for us to determine a limit. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity, so here's these really negative numbers. I'm, I'm following this to the left to negative infinity. And it says negative one is undefined, negative 1.001 is 2000, but negative 1000 is one. So what that's saying to me is that that's actually tending to positive one. These y values seem to be getting closer and closer to positive one. Perhaps if I had more data, such as negative 10,000, negative 100,000, it would get much, much, much closer to the value one. Now over here in B, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative one from the left side. So here's negative one and I wanna approach it from the left side, well, what do the y values tend to be doing? Well, this is 2001. That's a really big number. And when I'm thinking about these really big numbers, I wanna think about really large values. And the largest value we can come up with is infinity. So that's where our limit seems to be going. Now we have the limit of f of x as x approaches negative one from the right-hand side. So I'm following negative one from the right-hand side this time. And look at this y value, negative, 1999 so again very similar to our last one well what does what can i make an assumption for here well that seems like a really really negative number a really large negative value well what are really large negative values called mathematically we say negative infinity now i'm looking at the limit of f of x as x approaches two so here's two and i want to see okay now this one, notice here, it doesn't have a plus sign, it doesn't have a minus sign, so we're not looking at it from the right side or from the left side. We're looking at it from both sides. So I'm following this at two from both sides. Well, from the left-hand side, it says 0.333 or one-third. And on the right-hand side, it says 0.334, also can be rounded to one-third. So from the information that we have here in this table is that the limit at this value is one third. So some sort of removable discontinuity at that point. Now here in part E, we're going to follow this over to positive infinity. And we're going to examine what our graph is doing. So at a really large X value, we have 1000 for our X value, but what is the Y value doing? Well, the Y value is really, really close. This is really close to be one. So as infinity, as we get to grow our x values larger, we seem to be approaching one. Now lastly, I have the limit of f of x as x approaches negative one. So we're going back to negative one. So look at this. On the left-hand side of negative one, I'm going up to positive infinity. But on the right-hand side of negative one, we're going down. To negative infinity so those aren't matching and those aren't going to real numbers so the limit doesn't exist and they're going to opposite infinity values so we're gonna say this does not exist I hope you like this lesson on the limit existence theorem please reach out to me if you have any questions I'm mr. Hernandez and I'm always here to help